Hi, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for stopping in. In today's video, I'm gonna show you all the new features and cosmetic changes in the new Windows 11 operating system that's about to be released by Microsoft. There is a lot of speculation right now about whether or not this new operating system that's going to be released by Microsoft is essentially an update to Windows 10 or a full-fledged, completely new operating system. If you'd like to watch my video I made last week about this new Microsoft event on my opinions on what I think is going to happen, click on this video up here and then come back and watch this one to see all the different changes. So before I get started, I was debating on whether to do a full Windows 11 walkthrough or just make a video showing you the differences between the already existing Windows 10 and the upcoming Windows 11. So in order to make this video easier to digest and not waste your time, I decided to go that route and maybe later I'll do a full walkthrough for anyone who might be interested. With that being said, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice when you get Windows 11 installed is the obvious graphical interface change. No longer is the start menu over here on the left side like everybody is used to. It has now been moved down here in the middle on the taskbar, very similar to a Mac iOS. You can move that over back to the left and I will show you how to do that in a second, but I'm just gonna run through some of these new changes. Obviously, new wallpaper. So here's the new start menu. And when you click on it, it's going to show you the pinned apps according to what Microsoft thinks that you want to use. Down here, it's going to have recommended based on apps that you have recently used, and you can click more and see. This is basically the equivalent of the old quick access in Windows 10. Now, of course, you want to go see all the items on your start menu. You would go up here and click all apps, and then you see you have the scrolling app menu as you did in Windows 10. So it hasn't really changed, it's just redesigned and of course now you can easily click right here on your account lock the machine change your account settings or sign out go over here for power shutdown restart and so on now if you want to change these taskbar settings you can simply right click here on the taskbar and click on taskbar settings The one thing I did notice that was different in this, and this could just be because it's a developer's copy and it has not been implemented yet, so be aware of it, but for those of us who are used to right-clicking on the taskbar and selecting Task Manager, that is no longer there. Now there's two easy ways to get to it. You can go to your Run box and type Task MGR and bring it up that way, or you can do the old three-finger salute, Control-Alt-Delete click on task manager and bring it up that way. I'm sure that will be something that they will implement in the final version, but just know that in the developer version, it is not in there. So if you want to change these settings here, you would just right click on the taskbar, click on taskbar settings. This is all new here. So the very first item here is how you want your alignment. Now you can just select here and you have two options, center, which is the default, as you can see, or choose left and as you can see, it puts it all the way over here to the left. You can show whether or not your widgets button, which is right here, is visible. And show desktop buttons. Uh, also has this option, which was available in previous versions. You just right clicked on the taskbar to get to it before. Now it's here under the taskbar settings. Automatically hide the taskbar, just like that. And you see it disappeared from the bottom of the screen. You can show badges and some other features here, which really seem pointless. Now there is a couple other new features here as you can see the Windows background has completely changed that's kind of an interesting little ribbon-esque thing I don't know what it means or what it is but it's kind of cool and you can see that there are some other new wallpapers so those are pretty cool nothing you know really different other than just some cool backgrounds. Same as before, picture, solid color, slideshow, that hasn't changed. Device usage here. Uh, I th don't think this was an option in Windows 10. I've never seen it. Uh, I've also never looked for it either, but this would be a good way to keep up 
with the different things that you do on your computer. Now, honestly, what I think this really does is this is another way for Microsoft to say, okay, you spend 80% of your time doing budgets and spreadsheets, so let us recommend this cool program from our store to sell you. So I personally would turn this off and I will let Microsoft know what I want when I want it instead of them telling me. So as you can see here, the main control panel looks pretty similar. Um, all the basic settings are as they were in previous versions of Windows, Windows Security. Uh, they have stepped up Windows Defender a little bit. Um, I don't like Windows Defender. I use a different antivirus program. I just don't care for it. Uh, but if you, but it does have virus protection, if you want to call it that. A backup, it automatically ties to OneDrive, of course, because that's a Microsoft program. And if you want OneDrive, it comes pre-installed, and you can just log in with your Microsoft account. Matter of fact, when you create an account on this machine, if you tie it to your Microsoft account, it should automatically tie it to your OneDrive. And the whole purpose is to make everything simple. Windows activation, as you can see, it's labeled Windows 11 Home. So it is confirmed that there is a Windows 11 version. Now, whether it's going to be a retail version or not, or just a free upgrade from Microsoft, I don't know. You also have add Microsoft account. I have it set up on here uh, for a local account. I'm not attached to my Microsoft account. I prefer Microsoft to know as little about me as possible. For multitasking, you can work with multiple windows, different snap settings as far as dragging a window, letting it snap quickly. So as you can see here, you got multitasking options, which there were some in Windows 10. Um, there are a few extra snap options here, which are kind of cool. Here's title bar window shake. When I grab a Windows title bar and shake it, minimize all other windows like that, it basically turns everything off, which I'm not even really sure why that would come in handy unless you just didn't want people seeing what you were doing while you were using the computer. Okay, remote desktop settings. Obviously Windows 11 Home does not support that. The Windows 11 professional version will most likely have remote desktop. Gaming, this is where things start to change a little bit. Now, to be completely honest, I don't game. I do know that Microsoft is working on improving the store and tying it closer to the Xbox platform so that you can kind of synchronize. And also, if I understand correctly, that Microsoft is making it, they're trying to make it possible to where you could play your Xbox games on your PC and vice versa. So if you're an Xbox user, that might be kind of cool. So if you're a gamer, definitely check that out. Privacy settings, I really don't know a whole lot about these because I never really paid much attention to Microsoft privacy. I assume that I have none. So, uh, it does look like there are a few more options. Look like you can specify. Uh, I'm pretty sure in Windows 10 you can do this too. Uh, it may just be a little more detailed in what you can and cannot guard against. Uh, files, same with, okay, so screenshot borders here. Um, not really sure why that's even a thing. So say, for example, somebody, you suspect somebody going into your browser settings and looking up your passwords and taking a screenshot of them, it, this would prevent that. Now, would it prevent somebody from taking their phone and holding it up in front of that window and looking at your passwords and now they have it on their phone? No. It's a feature, but it doesn't really seem like it's all that useful. So that pretty much covers all the control panel settings. A couple things I wanted to point out here. As you can see, Microsoft has got a whole new suite of icons. Greater, it, whether they're better or not, I don't know, but if you look over here, now before, instead of where you just had regular plain black and white, now your icons on the left and left side here have actual color coding. So pictures actually looks like pictures. Make music looks like music. Videos look like music. So that is kind of cool. But for people who use their computers every single day, um, probably already in the habit of seeing things a certain way that's more of just a cosmetic oh isn't that cute but it would be nice i mean you know if for some reason you needed a icon of music to know that the word music means your music folder then that would be handy but again mostly cosmetic with the start menu here in the middle you've got these apps laid out like this again still in the middle of the screen and as you add more apps to your computer, they will take up this taskbar. We already, I already showed you what the left click on the start menu does and enabling these icons. As in Windows 10, 
So if you right click on the start menu, you basically have the same features as before. That is similar. It's a little different. Um, it's got some different options on here. I'm sure you, I think there was a option in the, in the settings where you can control which options were visible on here. Uh, but I do like that. That's kind of neat. Um, like I said, it's, it's more cosmetic. It's a larger font. Um, uh, I actually like it. It's a cleaner font. I think it looks kind of cool. Again, so far, everything I've seen in this version of Windows looks pretty uh, cosmetic. Now, one thing I'd like to look at is the device manager. And device manager looks just like it does in Windows 10. If you will notice, though, notice the rounded edges on these windows. That is a new customization that Microsoft is implementing in a lot of their windows. So if you see here, these instead of these boxed off edges, they're more rounded. I guess that's to make you feel more like it's a Mac. I don't know, but I'm not really 100% on it. Uh, what I would say is that for the most part, I was expecting to see a large number of new features in this version of Windows. And because it coincides with the 21H2 release, I was really expecting it to be feature rich. And so far it seems to me that it's mostly cosmetic. Now, that being said, this is a developer release. It, could, it is entirely possible that it could be a lot of features that are included in Windows. So for example, the widgets feature here, which for some reason I can't get it to open. So it could just be that this copy of Windows doesn't have that feature completed yet. So as you can see here, here's another feature in Windows. You can click on Task View, which will quickly let you switch between active windows and access to the Windows Store. This is the biggest change that is coming down the pipe for Microsoft. They've already made it clear that they want to make the Microsoft Store more like the Apple Store. So instead of going through this long, complicated process of updating apps to be compatible with the Microsoft Store, which is really difficult. Microsoft is basically going to allow game and app and software developers to submit their apps to the Microsoft Store, very much like you would do the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. And it's going to expand the possibilities for smaller, lesser known companies or individuals to create content that can then be pushed out to the Microsoft audience. Microsoft has already said they're making Windows 10 more like a service than an operating system. And I think this is gonna be a continuation of that. This allows people like you and me who maybe develop a game, who want to get it out there and maybe make a little bit of money off of it. Instead of going through 700 different types of testing and all kinds of red tape through Microsoft, you can upload your content directly to Microsoft and get it pushed out there. So I think that's cool. It's great for game developers, app developers, um, anybody who has an idea for a program. If you've ever wanted to design something or create an app, it's gonna give you the opportunity to compete with the big boys now. So that's kind of cool. We don't know what's gonna happen with the next full-on release. I'm sure that will be coming soon. And I'm sure there will be other copies, other development releases with more full-fledged features. I just wanted to go through and show you what main differences there are so far in this version of Windows. So you can determine whether or not is this something you even want to update to. That's also considering whether or not Microsoft gives you the option to update or not. You'll find that out on June 24th after Microsoft has their big event. So if any of this content is helpful to you or you find it interesting, please take a second and subscribe to my channel. As a small creator, it really helps me out a lot. I spend a lot of time making these videos for you and your subscription would mean a lot. So hopefully you found this useful. Click on that like button for me. Show me a little support. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this new version of Windows. Where do you think it's going? What do you think Microsoft's going to do? What do you think of the new layout? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know down below what you think. So until next time, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.